Hello, welcome to Semiconductor Education. This is Vincent Chan. Today we are going to introduce, present a new series on the subject of sinusoidal oscillator. So I'm going to teach you around ten lectures in this subject. Sinusoidal oscillators. Basic principles explained. Let's start with the model of sinusoidal oscillator, which is the feedback structure. So you have the signal source coming in, and then through the mixer, it creates an input signal of the amplifier, and the SI is gonna be fed into the A, the open loop transfer function. The output of the amplifier got sampled and sent it back through the feedback, the purple one, the feedback network and generating a feedback signal going back to the mixer at the input side. If we talk about the operation of the signal, the SS, S means the signal, minus SF equals SI, times A, or A as function of S, becomes the SO, the output signal, the XO, going back, multiply by beta, and creating the SF. So it's a closed loop configuration. A closed loop configuration. So now, the first definition for the loop gain is the product of open loop transfer function A times the beta transfer function, the feedback transfer function. This is the first definition for loop gain. So usually, personally, I prefer to use this definition when it comes to evaluate the stability of a feedback, the stability of a feedback, especially an amplifier. The stability of when the subject is around for a feedback amplifier, to examine if the feedback amplifier is stable or not, then personally I prefer to use this definition to investigate, investigate the stability of a feedback amplifier. But on the other hand, when it comes to, so this is the def first definition of the loop gain, A times beta, and the negative sign at the mixer, at the mixer, was excluded, okay, was excluded. And then when it comes to the sinusoidal oscillator, and then I prefer to use the second definition, all right, for the loop gain, which will include it, the negative sign. So the loop gain is gonna be defined as, the loop gain is gonna be defined, yeah, my, Laser pointer is not working well. The receiver is not working well. Let me, uh, excuse me, let me just quickly pause. I will be right back. All right, I'm back. So we were talking about the definition of the second definition of the loop gain. So which will include the negative sign. So now the new definition, so to, to, differen to differentiate the second definition from the first one, then I use a new symbol called L prime, okay? So L prime of S is the second definition for the, for the loop game. So which now the negative sign is included. So, so the L prime of X is defined as the A times beta and coming back and capture the negative sign. The negative sign, okay? So negative A times beta, all right? Negative, so minus A times the beta. So in other words, it's going around the circle and then you capture A and you grab the beta and also you include the minus sign. So it's negative is the minus A times, 
So going around the circle, then what you see is what you get. Loop game, the second definition for the loop game. So we're going to use this definition to tackle the sinusoidal oscillator. So now, what's this? Closed loop transfer function. So it's a closed loop transfer function. So A divided by the amount of feedback based on the feedback theory. So through this definition, the L prime. So now the closed loop transfer function can be rewritten as this one, right? So still the same numerator A of S, open loop transfer function, divided by what? So one minus loop gain, L prime of S, right? So now, so what's, if you want to try, if we try, try to find out the, the pole of this closed loop transfer function, or if you want to try, it out, try to find out the closed loop pole, then we can try to solve this. We can try to solve command the denominator equals zero. So which creates a very, very important criteria criterion for sinusoidal oscillation. So this is the criterion for sinusoidal oscillation, which coming from setting the denominator of the closed loop transfer function as zero. So which is the loop gain equals one. Or one minus loop gain, L prime of X equals zero. So this is a very, very important criterion for sinusoidal oscillation. So let's try to maybe move around a little bit. So this equation tells us at the frequency of oscillation, when oscillation happened, and then so the omega O, the subscript O means the oscillation. So at the frequency of oscillation, the loop gain equals one. All right, so pay attention to this, because this is a complex loop gain. This is the complex quantity. So S is a complex frequency. So the complex loop gain equals one. This is actually came from the Heinrich Barkhausen, was invented by this gentleman in 1921 which is 100 years ago. So this is a very famous criterion for sinusoidal oscillation, which is called the Backhausen criterion. So Backhausen criterion states that at the frequency of oscillation, when the oscillation happens, loop gain, the complex loop gain equals one. So why I keep hammer the keyword complex, complex loop gain, over and over again. Why? Because it actually represents the two criteria. The first criterion is the Buckhausen criterion for phase, because it's the complex quantity. So to describe a complex quantity, we need to capture the magnitude of that complex quantity, magnitude of the loop gain. Also, the second quantity is the phase. So theta as a function of frequency, the theta is the phase angle of that complex loop gain. So let's start with the phase criterion, the Buckhausen criterion for phase at frequency of oscillation. The loop gain equals one. So what does that mean? That means the phase angle of that complex quantity is actually zero. So the phase angle of the complex loop gain equals zero. So at the frequency of oscillation, the complex loop gain, the phase of the complex loop gain equals zero degree. So this is a Buckhausen criterion for phase when oscillation happens, All right? So here's the concept for the sinusoidal Oscillation. So I'm going to move on 
So now we have tackled the phase. Phase degree is zero. So now what about the magnitude? Okay. So let's recapture the definition of the loop gain. All right. So going around the circle, circle, you have the a times the beta and times the negative sign, the minus. So going around the circle, what you see is what you get. So L prime of x equals one at when oscillation happens. And the phase angle at the frequency of oscillation, the phase angle of what? The phase angle of the loop gain at the frequency of oscillation should be zero degree. So at this, in this condition, so when this happens, what about the magnitude? So three cases. The first case is, if at the frequency of oscillation, the magnitude of the loop gain, if the magnitude of the loop gain is less than one, so what does that mean? It's the damped oscillation. Because when you're going around a circle, so the amplitude cannot be magnified, cannot be amplified, okay? Okay, so think about this, 0.9, because going back, if the loop gain is 0.9, so going around a circle, 0.81, and going around the circle, 0.65, so the magnitude get diminishing, all right? So then it's the damped oscillation, then it vanish. Then the oscillation is gone. Then the oscillation is over. So it's the damped oscillation. So if this is if we if we try to to design a feedback amplifier, and if we want to pursue, we want to govern that linear amplifier. So we don't want to see the oscillation. So this is what we want to see. And the one this kind of situation happened. Okay? So if the amplifier corresponds to associate associated with this case, and we said this amplifier is what? It's stable. This, but now our objective is not to design an amplifier, but we want to create an oscillation, right? So we want to create, want to generate a sinusoidal oscillation signal. So the next two criterion is something that we really want to see. So this is, if the growth is, if, if the, at the frequency of oscillation, if the magnitude of the loop gain is greater than one, then growing oscillation. If equals to one, then going back around the circle, one, going around the circle, one, one, one. So it's the sustained oscillation with an equal magnitude, all right? So three, Cases, less than one, greater than one, and equal to one. So it corresponds to the damped oscillation, growing oscillation, and then sustained oscillation. So now, in the next lecture, so I'm going to teach you how to analyze this Vimbridge oscillator. So basically, is composed by two major parts. The first part is the amplifier, the amplifier, the blue part. And the second part is what we call the frequency selective network. And then think about this, in a real oscillator circuit. So when you want, because the up end is the active device, right? So up end, cannot work without a power supply. And the power supply has a, the real power supply has the has the switch, right? So if you turn on a switch, if you turn on the switch, usually you will create sort of a noise, right? An electrical disturbance. And the electrical di disturbance or noise has all kinds of frequency components. And then those kind of frequency components kind of going around the circle, going around, and they're competing each other, right? But only one frequency component will survive. Which one? Only that frequency which satisfies the Buckhausen phase criterion will survive. Okay, get it? 
So this is the omega O. So only the omega O will survive in, will exist in the circle. I'm talking about the concept. So just picture the oscillator in your, in your mind. I'm talking to you right now, okay? So picture the oscillator circuit in your mind. So only the frequency component, that frequency component, which can satisfy the Bachhausen phase criteria. Because going back in phase, going back zero degree in phase, so only that kind of frequency component can be sustained. And then here comes the second criteria, which is the Bachhausen magnitude criteria. Okay, so Bachhausen magnitude criterion tells us if it's less than one, then it's over. The oscillation will evaporate it. Okay, so to sustain, to initiate, to activate the sinusoidal oscillation, so the initial condition has to be greater than one. So in other words, Remember I talk about the switch? When you turn on, so maybe the amplitude associated with that frequency component is very, very small. But even though it's very, very small, the very weak can going through the circle and uh, with in the condition of the greater than one look in and help the weak signal to going get bigger and bigger and bigger. So anyway, you got my, got my point. So my point is the initial condition of the sinusoidal oscillator has to be greater, greater than one. And then in the third lecture, so I'm going to show you how to capture how to decide a final sinusoidal signal amplitude. So when that happens, then the circuit will create a sinusoidal output with an equal, saturated, stable, constant amplitude. So when this happens, that means the circuit is going through the sustained oscillation where the loop gain is equal to one, right? So this is the major takeaway. This is the Bachhausen criterion for magnitude. In short, at frequency of oscillation to satisfy it, the Bachhausen criterion for magnitude at frequency of oscillation, the magnitude of the loop gain has to be greater than or equal to unity, all right? Greater than or equal to unity. So here's the takeaway. For sinusoidal oscillation, Bachhausen criterion for phase at frequency of oscillation. So remember the definition of the loop gain. So at frequency, frequency of oscillation, the phase angle of the complex loop gain has to be zero degree has to be zero degree. And then here comes the Bachhausen criterion for magnitude, okay? So at frequency of oscillation, the magnitude of the log n has to be greater than or equal to unity. So if greater than one, growing oscillation, and equal to one, then it represents a sustained oscillation. All right, so we have come to the end of this lecture. So I hope you received to really understand the fundamental principle of sinusoidal oscillator. Thanks for watching.